Welcome back, it's time to play in the shed again. Today I'll be playing on the lathe. I saw this on YouTube and thought, hmm, that'd be interesting, I wonder whether I could do one. But of course I realised that um, things that you see on the internet are always more difficult than they seem. Still, what's the worst that can happen? I'm using a bit of aluminium because brass is too expensive and it looks like it's uh, one and a half inches diameter. The YouTuber I'm copying off, called My Mechanics Insights, suggests 18 graduations. He uses a dividing head to make the graduations on the um, material, but I don't have one of them, so I found the circumference of a one and a half inch and divided it up into 18 bits and printed it out. So I'm just blacking up the material so that I can put scratch marks on it. And let's put the paper around. And, oh poo, <laughs> it actually doesn't meet up. Hmm, well, it wasn't actually exactly one and a half inches, so I measured it again properly and printed it out again. And this time, the paper comes around and just about touches. Good enough for me. So I'll just type that in place with a bit of masking tape. get some nice straight scratch marks. I'm just putting it on a piece of angle and I'm just using my craft knife to run along the line using the edge of the angle as the guide. And so I just go around there one at a time putting scratch marks in and Bob will be my uncle. And voila, 18 scratch marks of equal spacing. So now I can go over to the lathe. But before I can do the technical bit, I just need to face off the end. So that it's nice and straight. And I'm also going to put uh, an indentation in the end as well, because this is going to be a plinth. With my uh, top slide on a guest angle, I'm just using the top slide to uh, run the boring bar I'm, I'm using um, to just do that um, indentation in, the, in what's going to be the top of the plinth. Now this is the bit of cunning stuntery that I learned from the Mr. My Mechanics Insights. Even though I'm using a, um, a three jaw chuck that self centers, I take one jaw out and just wind two jaws in. Basically I'm uh, winding it in the amount that I want the diameter of the small discs. And then I put the third jaw in, which will be offset. Very magical. And now I'm marking that offset jaw and just putting a scribe mark on it so that I can line that scribe mark up with the scribe mark um, on the material so that I can have it in exactly the same place every time as I move the scribe marks around. So I'm just lining up with one scribe mark to be the first position. And you can see now how the material goes around in a, a wobbly circle. I'm using a three mil wide um, cut off tool to do this job. And this is really nasty because I hate plunge cuts anyway. And this is an interrupted cut plunge cut 
Ideally, I'd like to be doing these cuts right up close to the chuck, but I can't do that because my little lathe will only accept up to 26 mil through the chuck. So this is way too big for that. So I get lots of chatter. As you can see, I'm almost finished the first little disc. Now my discs are about 15 mil diameter, but you know, really the, the disc size is a little bit random. Um, however, I realized that um, I needed to only move around, you know, sort of um, an, an eighteenth at a time. Otherwise, the offset of the disc is too much and you don't get enough material holding each disc together. Anyway, with the first one done, it's time to loosen off the chuck and turn it round one. And do it all again. I don't mind admitting that this really tested my patience because I had to go really slow and really careful because at any time disaster could happen and the whole thing could be ruined, <laughs> which is usually what happens. The chattering is really putting my teeth on edge, but there's really nothing I can do about it other than just keep going. Well, I'm making progress and it does seem to be working, so on to the next graduation and on to the next little disc. I found that for my little lathe and this material, running at about 300 revs seemed to be about the best I could do. Any faster and it increased the chatter and any slower and it tended to drag the, the tool too much rather than cut. Anyway, we're getting there. Starting to look like a spiral now. So I'm starting to get a bit excited as though this is really going to work. And now that I'm getting a bit closer to the chuck, I can speed up a little bit as well, so things are going a bit faster. Well, according to my calculations, this should be finished. So if I move it round and uh, just use my square from the first disc to the last disc, and yep, the square goes through the centre of the first and last disc. So I've done a complete spiral, and that's all I'm going to do. Of course, you could just keep going and going. But now it's time to finish it off, so I need to put the jaws back in so that they're equal. I'm doing a nice clean finishing pass on what's going to be the base of the plinth and then I'm going to knurl the base. I found that if you get a nice smooth finish to start with the knurl always looks better. Just a final touch up with a bit of um, 1200 grit emery paper make it all nice and smooth and then it's time for knurling. Using my shop made knurling tool which works really nicely. Of course I didn't use, I didn't um, make the cutting wheels. 
um, I took them off one of those uh, knurling tools that push into the side of the, the material and that was never ideal particularly for this little lathe. So this tool squeezes top and bottom and it works a treat even on hard steel. The process I've found works the best for me um, to, to knurl a product is to just have it running slowly and then gradually tighten down the knurl into the material until it looks like it's cutting okay. Once I'm happy with that then I just start the auto feed and just let it feed across slowly. So you can see that the auto feed's running and it's running very slowly to the left to create the knurl. Okay, yep, I'm happy with that. You always get a bit of uh, a daggy at the end of the knurl that I cut off before that, so um, it all should be hunky and dory. So, one last plunge cut with the parting tool and the job will almost be complete. You usually end up with a little tit on the end of the, the product when you part. So I'm just going to zip that off on the sander. For obvious reasons I can't put it back in the lathe and take that tit off. But the sander does a reasonable job. So now for a bit of a final clean with some brake cleaner just to get any oil and grit out of the, the knurling um, mostly and the job will be finished just look at that lovely knurl I really like the look of that but you can see all the chatter marks on all of those little discs I guess I could say it's a design feature Anyway, now it's time for the glamour shots. As I said, this is a plinth and you could use it to, uh, as a trophy for maybe a tennis match. Or maybe you could uh, display a piece of woodwork that you made. I reckon the spiral turned out really well. Really quite impressed with that. And thanks to the YouTube channel called My Mechanics Insights, I have a success. And if you're interested in uh, where I got my inspiration, I've got a link in the description to his channel. Well, as this is a plinth that I'll be keeping, this is what I'm going to use it for 
put my steel egg on top. This was a little exercise I did a little while ago. Didn't film it. Didn't know whether it was going to work or not. Just made out of steel. Feels really nice to handle. And looks cute on the plinth. I have to admit I'm really quite proud of myself for having succeeded first time. Thanks for watching.